fantastic to meet you. Thanks you so much for taking the time to sure. speak with us. I'm Sarah from the upcoming in the UK. Um, maybe we can start by talking about where we are currently in beautiful, beautiful Marrakesh. Mm -hmm. What is it about uh, this place that makes it so special? This is the first time I've ever been here, and it's a place that I've always wanted to come to. And I think that um, it's just as beautiful as I imagined it. Yesterday, my wife and I went to the souk, and it was you know, one of the great experiences of my life. I mean, it's just, it's, it's every bit as great as, as people say it is and more. Um, because it's a tourist experience and they're actually, you know, I mean, people actually making things and doing things and, you know, that's, that, are, that are vital and essential and incredibly beautiful. I mean, I, I was just, and I'm looking forward to going out near the desert. Mm. So. And how do you see the role of film festivals currently for ones like this, but also obviously there's a really uh, long calendar of them, including obviously the New York one, which mm -hmm. you're involved with. So how do you see the evolving role? I think that film festivals at this point in film history are becoming something like the equivalent of distribution companies because the way that things are shaking down Obviously, more and more people are seeing films online. Um, they're seeing films streamed on smaller screens, and so filmmakers are counting on film festivals as places where people get the opportunity to see their films on big screens. And so that's a, a new development, I would say, um, in the last couple of years, in fact. And what have been the highlights for you this year of New York and some of the other festivals? Well, I mean, you know, not to be self-promoting, but it's been, you know, since I'm here as a filmmaker, one of the highlights for me has been, like, you know, um, Tribeca, because I won three awards. <laughs> so that was, like, a highlight. But in terms of, like, films that have played and that have seen in festivals, I don't know, you know, Roma is obviously, you know, a great film. That was our centerpiece in New York. Um, Claire Denis' film High Life, Christian Petzold's film Transit, uh, you know, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. I mean, you know, Richard Billingham's film Ray and Liz, which I adore. That's just a great, great film. And so for your first fictional feature, because I know you've done documentaries about film in the past, why did you choose this story? Maybe you can introduce the film a little bit and kind of what inspired you. Is it something that is from your own experiences or something else? It's all my experiences. It's my experiences of my family, my mother. Uh, it's a film that I really couldn't have made until, my mother af until after my mother had passed away. Um, it's not that it's strictly based on anyone in particular, but the emotional traits and the sense of guilt and the, um, you know, the arc of the character of the son is certainly based on a friend of mine, but again, not slavishly. He didn't become an evangelical Christian. He just, his addiction switched to other things. Mm -hmm. And how did you get this cast together? Did you have certain people in mind, working with Mary Kay Place, for example, and how did you work with them to bring out your story in the way you wanted? I, I truly had Mary Kay Place in mind for 20 years, because I had the idea in my head for many, many years, and so when I saw The Rainmaker by Coppola, that was when I, I said, well, I have to write this story for her, because she had exactly the spirit that I wanted to put on film. Um, as far as the rest of the cast, Casting the son, casting Jake, was very um, lucky for me because he's exactly the mixture that I was looking for, um, exactly the kind of energy and the kind of dislocation. He got it perfectly. As far as the rest of the cast and the older women, if you're writing a movie with a lot of parts for women over 60, you have um, the ability to cast some of the greatest artists alive um, because they don't get a lot of work except in, you know, 
other kinds of movies and they're generally smaller parts as like happy grandmothers or you know I, so I mean you know to have Estelle Parsons and Andrea Martin you know in a movie and Joyce Van Patten to be able to work with them is just amazing to me and um Having Scorsese as you know uh, as producer, I know you have a long-term friendship with him as well. So how do you, how did that maybe influence your filmmaking style, or do you take any inspiration from him specifically, or is he just someone that's great to collaborate with? Mm, style is something that I think only comes from making. You can't say it's. When I was young and I was first starting to write criticism, I, 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 you know, I had another idea about style, and then I learned, you know, over the years, it's something that's that's seen from outside. It's almost like someone else could describe the style of the movie to me, perhaps, um, in a way that I never could. And I think Marty would say the same thing. So would almost every other filmmaker I've ever known. Um, you make choices and you just keep making choices and responding um, and you have an idea in your head that you want to preserve the, the, um, the spirit of but then at the same time you also need to respond to the moment and let the film take on the life of its own and so that's something that I certainly learned from Marty um, he was nothing, you know, over the years. He's been absolutely 100% encouraging to me um, to make films. And, um, you know, he, uh, he and I went through the film after I had made it and just, you know, looked at a cut and, you know, um, just obviously a very, very attentive viewer. And so, I don't know. That's an answer. <laughs> and it does deal with a lot of themes. Guilt, grief, regret. You have got, you know, she sort of does go on a journey. Obviously, uh, son's dealing with addiction. He goes through a journey, she said, as an art to his um, trying to recover. So what do you think in the film, it, do you, did you want to say about that? What do you think the themes are for you? And what do you think the film has to say? I don't know. I mean, themes aren't really what I had in mind as much as transmitting the way that people feel about the way that people conduct their lives. So a lot of people that I know conduct their lives with guilt and they become used to it. It's like when you have a problem with, you know, a tooth and then it becomes ever present and you just get used to it. And then you kind of like feel like you can't, you know, it's a necessary part of life. And so with guilt, I think that that's the way that it is for a lot of people. It's certainly the way it was for my mother. Um, as far as regret goes and loss, that's life. I mean, that's what we all feel. That's what we all go through. And um, what I wanted to do was to make a film that reflected that without, it's not, there's nothing tragic about it. Sadness comes, sadness goes, insight arrives, loss, you know, when she's talking to the woman who's doing her, you know, nails and she says, you know, we all think that everybody's going to live forever when we're young. We do. You just do when you're a kid. You just like, you think everybody around you is just always going to be there. And, of course they're not. And the first time it happens, someone's not there. It's a, it's a shock. The second time, perhaps a little less so, and then you start to understand, well, it's, it happens to everybody, and then at a certain point you understand, it'll happen to me, you know, um, or maybe in a different order. But the point is that that's, that's just life. And so that's what I wanted to do, to make a film that reflected the way that people live that was frank, but without being, you know, there's nothing tragic about it, it's just it's the way it is. Yeah, so in that respect, it's not necessarily something that should be seen as a negative or 
you know, this, this sort of optimism in the humanity. Of it this. isn't a negative in the way that she responds when her son tells her that thing at the end is just sort of, she can sort of hear it, but sort of not, but it penetrates her in some way. And it's just, it's, it's you know, you become a little kinder to yourself. But then in the end, everybody's always looking for ultimate answer. And the kind of more dreamlike aspects towards the end, because that kind of a tool you wanted to use. Absolutely. It's built into the structure of the film, and I wanted time to kind of expand um, and uh, to move through it in a, you know, differently as the film went along. And it's punctuated by the rides in the car um, and, uh, you know, dreams and reality, be, you know, become very so close that you can't really pull them apart. That's, that's life too. So what are your hopes for this film and then also for what you'll do next? It's been great so far, um, you know, and it's been great here. The, recept the response to the film has been wonderful. And so I have something else that I'm trying to get down on paper so that I can get it set up before the film is released in the United States in March. So I just want to make the next one. Yeah. So you'll continue with fictional stuff? Yeah. This is now your path. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking time to thank speak Thank you very us much. And the best of luck with the rest of your journey with your film. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.